Welcome to the e-commerce playbook brought to you by IWD Agency, where we share tools, tips, and tactics from industry-leading experts to help you take your e-commerce game to the next level. Now, here's your host, Joe McFerrin. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the e-commerce playbook. Uh, my name is Joe McFerrin. I'm with IWD Agency. I've got James here. He's one of our account managers at IWD Agency. Hi, Joe. Hey, James. How's it going? Great. Thank you. So today we're covering a, a Magento topic. Uh, it's um, yeah, open source versus commerce. Uh, used to be called community versus enterprise, but they right. changed the names in the last couple of years. Sure. Um, I think a lot of people come to us and ask us, uh, you know, why should I pay for the commerce version? What's what's better? Is it better? Can I still use the open source one for for production uses? Um, I don't know. What are your thoughts on these? Yeah, I mean, it, I think it depends on the definition. You know, the the business requirements for the customer you know what what they want sure. and what they need uh -huh. um definitely possible for somebody to run a successful business on uh on open source mm -hmm. okay uh, yeah and magenta 2 open source great product um you know you, you you're responsible for finding a suitable host there's lots of those it's not the wild west of host anymore you know you can find a, a magento partner hosting a hosting partner that has a good reputation mm -hmm. that, that allows you to have uh you know good uptime good support good security Sure. And I guess it is an open source platform, so it is very powerful, but it also means that you do need to have some knowledge on development. It's not a plug and play type solution, right? Yeah, I don't, I, I can't think of the last time I saw a Magento 2 site running on the Lumia theme, you know, um, <laughs> sure. whether there are any. The Lumia know, themes that want the, the theme out of the box, right? Out of the box, theme, yeah. Yeah, that mm -hmm. comes with uh, Athletic Gear, I think, okay. you know, as that. I'm sure there are some. We could probably Google it and see. But that means that somebody has uh, somebody has implemented either a, a third you know third party uh, off the shelf theme for that you know or mm -hmm. or had a, a, a team in house that has created a theme developed a theme for them sure so uh, so that's one component you know it makes me think of it the other part is just the security you know Magento will release uh, at a minimum four patches uh, security patches and uh, functionality patches over the year uh, some years there could be more. And you, you really need uh, a, a team, a trusted team, a Magento certified team that you work with, either in-house or external, to apply those patches. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, great. And so uh, as far as jumping to the topic of what's the difference and why should I maybe pay for the commerce for solution versus the open source solution? And I know even on the commerce solution, there's the, the on-prem and the, the cloud version. Right. But just to focus on, you know, what's the difference between the open source and the, the commerce? Um, and then we can talk about the hosted versus not hosted. Sure. Yeah. Something I uh, have a lot of familiar with is the B2B product that comes, uh, yeah, it, it, it's Magento Commerce, both commerce and commerce cloud. So uh, if you're a customer that sells not just B2C, but, but, but B2B, uh, that that is a product that Magento has worked on that uh, gives additional functionality you know, targeted uh, specifically to B2B uh, shared catalogs, uh, some, some pricing things um, that are that are really good for B2B customers. And that's not available open source. OK, sure. Um, there's also, uh, you know, a, a, a business intelligence package, the BI tool that they have that uh, gives you additional reporting, you know, on top of that. And that's kind of a next gen reporting. Most people go from uh, Magento. Uh, you know, that maybe not happy with what's available out of the box with the Magento open source reporting tool. Magento commerce reporting tool doesn't give you much more functionality, but the BI tool is really a next gen tool for, uh, for analyzing, you know, your business. Sure. Um, there's personalization and segmentation tools that are part of uh, Magento uh, commerce. There's uh, uh, dot mailer comes, you know, comes uh, baked in it with some of the um, additional functionality there. Yeah. Yapo is now Yopo, part of it. Too. Yeah, Yapo yeah. now and two dot three is part is part of that, which mm -hmm. is great. So, uh, and these are all things that um, I think is really uh, some some customers may base it on on revenue. You know, whether they have these needs, some customer that maybe they, maybe they're using it as a lead gen site. Maybe they they convert these customers over their phone based sure. on a sales staff. They might still have the B two B product uh, that's available on Magento Commerce, but not meet the revenue numbers that we think are required to move to that that point it's really based on the business needs of the customer sure yeah and a lot of the features that you mentioned you, you can you can implement a lot of those features or something similar with the open source but you're going to have to uh, buy a third-party extension and implement that and there's a cost involved with um, installing that and implementing it and upkeeping it sure. and all, all that stuff right yeah you get you get a you know one part we haven't talked about is you get an additional level of support right you get a dedicated account manager you know you get a contact at magento you have the ability to create tickets, you mm -hmm. know, and get help with them. Um, you know, if you find bugs, 
if you find issues, if if you need some support, that that comes with the, the commerce license. And I know that that's really valuable for customers. Oh, totally. I, I think they, you know, I think it's a pretty, when I talk to customers about this, there's a pretty um, defined level of how much revenue you're doing online uh, to start considering the commerce solution. I think if you're doing more than a million dollars online, then you're running a pretty serious business online. You want to treat it as a serious business. And having Magento uh, to back you up and have their SLA and uh, make sure. sure that you can put in a ticket and you can uh, cry for help if you need it, that, that having them to protect your store is definitely worth the value of the, the commerce solution at that point, or at least worth considering, right? Yeah, I agree. You can remove the GitHub search from your browser uh, you know, bookmark, you know, where you, uh, on, on community when you're looking for a solution to the error that you have, you know, you, instead you have, you know, you have the Magento uh, a- admin login so that you can create a ticket. You, mm-hmm. know. you go to the experts, you can go to the, go to the, the experts, yeah, right. their team to, to help you out. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And then we can uh, cover a little bit about the, you know, I think Magento is really wanting people to, to use their cloud uh, solution. And we've implemented for a couple of clients and it's done very well. It's based upon the AWS um, servers. Uh, but can you give us a little bit of a background of the on-prem versus cloud solution that Magento is offering for commerce? Sure. Yeah, I have a customer actually uh, that is on, uh, I think, our first person that that went to Magento Commerce Cloud. Um, and, uh, you know, exceptional, enviable uh, performance numbers that came out of that. You know, uh, that's the first thing. I, I think the framework that they built with AWS, um, not not my strength to talk about it, but uh re- really really exceptional and uh and compelling like hard, hard you know hard, hard to get to that with uh some of the other hosts that we, sure. that we have so in that in that perspective i think you get what you pay for yeah um and you know as as you know we can we can track con- conversion rate and uh um you know some of the kpis to uh the, all the studies that point to you know the, the speed you know speed converts so i think that's really important to people yeah. Um, there's there's some tools baked into that also that make it easier to to do uh, like targeted. An example is a Magento admin. You know, somebody that works in Magento. You publish a new content. Uh, you know, a lot of the content that we uh, that we publish or work on on the web is is cached. You know, to a lot faster. It's com- it's complicated to get some of that to uh, to to appear. You know, and a simple thing is I I change the prices and the prices aren't showing. You know, mm-hmm. or I change this banner and the banner's not showing up and uh, just you know, from the Magento Commerce side, they 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 built some tools into that that allow you to do, uh, you know, a, a distinct uh, you, you flush a URL, for example. You change something on the page; it's not showing up because of the full page cache. You take the URL and you post it into uh, the tool in the Magento backend, and you and you flush it, and you're not affecting the site wide performance. You're flushing, you know, flushing that page in fastly and. It's such a small thing, but the convenience is, it's, it's something that's thought out. Yeah, know? that's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah, and the on-prem version is still a great version of Magento as well. And I know right. there's a lot of merchants out there that either, you know, you're in the government or medical or, or other areas and you have uh, stricter rules of where your servers have to be and, and the security behind them and they can't be tied to a network and all that. But it's still a great solution for those type of uh, merchants, it's, right? Yeah, it's a great solution. And uh, to speak of what you just said, yeah, they're, they're, the, if, if Magento is, uh, is hosting your site on on the AWS as part of the commerce cloud, then there are some restrictions. You know, you, if you have a WordPress blog, you know, you have a lot of content in WordPress, you're tied to WordPress, you like it, you like WordPress, um, you, can't, you can't move that to commerce. You know, you can't move mm-hmm. that can't to move it to their servers. No. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that, that's an example. It might, you know, we, we would be able to, there are third party extensions that, that are great for, for blogs. You know, we can move that to the MSD's blog extension or one of the third party extensions. Uh, to get around that but mm-hmm. um that's just an example of something that wouldn't fit into commerce and, and or commerce cloud and that would be a candidate for magento commerce on nexus mage mojo on on one of the other partners yeah yeah excellent well appreciate you covering that topic with me today james sure thanks for having me all right thanks